and there is a big imbalance. The reason why people have been abandoning the, the countryside is sabi nila, a better opportunity is in the city. Pero you will notice ang sikip-sikip na ninyo dyan. Okay, my son graduated last year sa electro- electrical engineering sa Central Philippine University sa Iloilo. When we were attending his graduation, 1,600 uh, students graduated. Summer pa lang yun. So I was asking my friends, saan, lahat, saan pupunta lahat ito? And isang skwelahan lang yun. So there must have been more than 10,000 people who graduated that summer in Iloilo lang. So I went to a businessman friend. Sabi ko, siya ang dami yung empleyadong makukuha. There's so much abundance. Alam mo, sabi sa akin nung kaibigan ko, doon wala kami makuwang tao sa Iloilo. So ang tanong ko, saan napunta tong 1,600 students galing CPU? Sabi na, they're migrating to the cities because they feel the opportunities in the cities are better. So, people have been abandoning the countryside, going to the cities and congesting. But this is Iloilo City already. Supposed to be city na siya. So, people are going to Cebu and going to Manila. Alam ba nyo na in the Bible, there was an incident that is similar? The Bible, in Genesis chapter, Genesis chapter 11, uh, there was a city that was built by man. Let, let me just go to Genesis 11. Ha? Let me just read that. Sabi dyan, Now the whole earth used the same language and the same words. It came about as they journeyed east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. They said to one another, Come, let us, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly and they use bricks for stones, and they use tar for mortar. They said, Come, let us build for ourselves a city and a tower whose top will reach into heaven. Let us make for ourselves a name. Otherwise, we will be scattered abroad on the face of the earth. Let me just share with you some of my insights sa, sa Babel. We know this is Babel, and they build a tower that will reach heaven. Do you know that this was the first city built by man. Okay, the first city built by man. People were people started to abandon the, the countryside and to go to the city. And in that city, they said they want to make a name for themselves. So it big sabin, they want to accomplish something for themselves. And then, sabi pa dyan, because people spoke the same language, they were able to accomplish impossible things. So I'd like you, I'd like you lang to take note of that. This is the first city. In the city, in this city, people want to make a name for themselves. And since they have the same language, they were able to accomplish the impos- impossible things. In fact, verse 6 specifically talked about this. And si God ang nakapansin. Sabi ng verse 6, the Lord, the Lord said, Behold, they are one people and, and they have the same language. And this is what they began to do. Now, nothing which they purpose to do will be impossible for them. You know, in my business training, I often quote this because I would tell people, if your organization is healthy and everybody have the same culture and speak the same language, nothing is impossible for them. However, if that is if this is the case, bakit bakit si God nagalit uh, sa Babel? Ba, bakit si God bakit niya scatter yung mga tao? Let me show you the other insights that I have. People establish the first religion. The tower is a representation of the religion they created. Now, why would I say this? Because religion is defined as man's way of going to heaven. People in Babel started to define what is good and what is evil. It's a first religion. Okay, ulitin ko ha. Religion is man's way to go to heaven. Bakit mo sinabi to first religion? Bakit sinabi ba ni God to build a tower to get to Him? It was just something they made up. Sabi na siguro, if we, if we build a tower high enough, we will reach the Lord. And because of this, they became very proud they wanted to be in control and they de- and they became independent of God only because they became strong on their own and because they had the same language 
marami silang nagawa. How did God respond to what they were doing in Babel? Nabasa na, nababasa natin in verse 5, sabi dyan, The Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the son of man had built. And then in verse 7, sabi, sabi ni God, Come, let us go down and there confuse their language so, they, so that they will not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of the whole earth and they stopped building the city. Now, tanong, di ba God wants all of us to be united? Di ba God wants us to have one heart and mind? Bakit when the people of Babel built a city, hindi niya ikinatuwa ito? So the question is, why did God scatter them? I will answer this sa inyo mamaya, but tingnan natin, are we, this, are we in the same boat as these guys? Are we building cities that God does not, is not happy about? Let me show you what where we are. This is the this is the picture of Makati. Tell me. People today want to stay together. Okay lang mas kiss quarters sila. You know today the government is the government is giving incentive for people to go to the province. Imagine libre na pamasahe, bibigyan pa ng puhunan sa probinsya and people still do not want to leave Metro Manila. Ang tanong nila Ano ang kabuhayan ko sa probinsya? So we, they would rather suffer in the city because they still they believe that the city can give them a better life. So in the city, people are hoping that they can make a name for themselves. Many many people have sold their land kasi sabi na walang kwenta yung farming. And, if, and they will take a risk in the city hoping that they will make a name for themselves. And then, today, tanong, no? iba-iba language that is a city. But there is one language that we all talk about. And it's the language of money. Either Bisaya ka, Ilocano ka, Tagalog ka, isa lang language ang naintindihan natin. We all believe that money makes the world go round. And money is a language that we share. It is also a language that gives us strength and pride. Today, natataranta ang tao. No? Bakit natataranta? Because this two-month quarantine, naubos pera nila. So ngayon, tarantang-taranta sila. And so even the government, naubos yung pera. When the government shared 6,000 pesos per, per, uh, per, per family to help them, pati gobyerno naubusan ng pera. And so we're really struggling. So nawala ang source of pride natin. Pero that's a source of pride. Eh? Kaya, tayo, kaya natin gusto sa city. In the city, people today define what is good and what is evil. Alam mo, when you are in quarantine, no, all you can do is watch YouTube. And so one time, I was watching this, uh, this video ni Rabi sa, Kar- sa, sa Karayas. No? And, 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 and there was this person who was asking him, sabi niya, why are you against relative morality? Ano relative morality? Sabi niya, all of us should be free to define what is good and what is evil. And sabi niya, why are, so, why are many Christians so afraid of relative morality? Can you imagine? Sabi ni Ravi, you know, if we allow relative morality, may isa diyang papatay and sasabihin niya, ba't mo ako kukulong? E tumi, tama lang ang pumatay. You know, so today, the cities are trying to define what is good and what is evil. And tayo naman mga kikristyano, payag tayo. In fact, today, we're so tolerant of them that we don't make a stand on what is good and what is evil. Kasi, in the city, people should be allowed to define that. So people make their own religion today. Why? Because we want to be in control. So what is my conclusion? One, COVID-19 shows us that we are not in control. That in the snap of a finger, God can take away the foundation of your confidence and your pride. COVID-19 destroyed the source of our confidence, which is the economy. I'm sorry for, sorry for the spelling. Okay? Nakita ko si Clinton. Ma. May ko-comment yan ni Clinton. Wrong spelling. Okay? Okay? So, so the city, COVID-19 today 
okay, showed us that God is still in control. And then, He took away our confidence. So, ang tanong ko, if God gave Babel different language to scatter them, ang tanong ko, is God trying to scatter us again? Has He taken many of our jobs because He's trying to scatter us again? Ang sagot ko, oo. So let me ask, let me answer the question, why did God scatter Babel? God scattered Babel so that they can fulfill God's purpose for man. What is God's purpose for man? If you've attended many of my seminars, I, the, 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 you will find that the basis of my seminar or my found, the foundation of my teaching is Genesis 1.28. I, I tell people that Genesis 1.28 is God telling us what is our purpose. Let me just read that. It says, God blessed them and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and rule over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the sky, over every living thing that moves on the earth. I've been telling you that to be fruitful and multiply does not mean to have many children. The reason why God scattered Babel is because He wants them to make the earth fruitful. Ulitin ko ha. He wants to make the earth fruitful. He, does not, he cannot allow only one place to be fruitful. And I will show you mamaya, if we continue to stay in the city without taking care of the countryside, we will soon destroy the cities. And I'll explain that mamaya. But basta gusto ni God, we make the whole earth fruitful, hindi lang isang city. And He wants us to do that by multiplying what we have, by filling the earth, by taking, con by taking control of it, by subduing it, and by ruling over. Why did God scatter the people in Babel? So that they can fill the earth. They can go to all the earth and do what? Rule over. Rule over is not to have dominion. If God is the owner of the earth, to rule over means to be his caretaker. And you know my story. I am in Bukidnon today. started in barren land. Why did God put me in that land? Because I'm the caretaker of that land. It, it, started with, it started bare, puro kugunan. And having this mindset that I am a steward of the Lord has given me the ability to make it a fruitful garden. But first, I have to fill it, meaning puntahan ko siya, multiply what we have, I took control of it, and then I took care of it. That is God's purpose for the world. That is God's purpose for all of us. Alam mo, we were born in different places of the country. People were born in different countries all over the world. However, most people will always say, there's something better for me elsewhere. And that's the reason why you see a lot of migration from the province to the city, from Manila to New York. We go around believing that there's something better elsewhere. Is that the way of the Lord? Let me show you another parable, which is the foundation of what I teach in business, the parable of the talent. It says, For it is just like a man about to go on a journey who called his own slaves and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another one, and to another, uh, to another two, and to another one, each according to his own ability. I highlighted certain words. Look at this. God entrusted possessions and talents. Now, this talent is not singing or dancing talent. That talent is actually money. One talent is worth 15 years of a laborer's salary. So in our currency today, that's 1.5 to 2 million. So ang magsinasabi ni, sinasabi ng Bible, if you're a child of God, bibigyan ka niya ng property, bibigyan ka rin niya ng pera. However, iba-iba ang level ng bibigay ni God sa atin. Depende yan sa ability natin. However, that will, be not, that will not be my point. Ang point ko, I need, you, I need you to see that God's gift is based on the location of His choosing, not 
hours. I need you to understand that. God's gift is based on the location of His choosing, not ours. The reason why many of us are struggling is because we left the, God, the gift God gave, abandoned it, and we now went to the city. Pagdating na natin sa city, we are fighting for only a limited amount of opportunity. Kaya na problema tayo. So people go there, well, sabi na, bahala na, uh, kung lang yan, uh, it's a risk, we, we take the risk. You know, we're taking the risk in the city na meron tayong provision, provision sa ibang lugar. Now, am I telling you to become farmers? No, 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 I'm not asking you to be farmers. Because in every place in the country, maraming opportunity, hindi lang yan pang farm. You know, yesterday, I was talking to Ma'am Mina Bondok and I can see her, her in, the, in, the, in the group. She's part of Sun Life and she decided to stay in Cavite. Bakit? And that's, that's, what, that's where God blessed her. Eh. You stay where God bless you. You don't try to, alam mo, pipilitin mo sarili mo. You're finding God's blessing. I need you to understand. The cities cannot sustain all of us. Do you know that if we all stay in the city and, and neglect the countryside, we will soon destroy the cities? What do I mean? Many of the flooding now in the, in the city is not caused by your drainage. It's caused by the mountains. Bakit? As people have abandoned the mountains, pinu- bago nila inabandon, kinalbo nila. And then you see that in Baguio, no? A few years ago, pagpunta ko sa Baguio, wala nang puno. And sa, 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 sa Baguio City, nagkaroon ng flooding. Bakit? There were no trees. Eh. There were no more trees to drive the water into the ground. When there are no trees in the mountain, the water will run off and flood the cities. However, sabihin ng ibang tao, eh, wala namang negosyo sa bundok eh. Uy, meron ah. And that is what I'd like to prove to all of you. And do you know that if everybody abandoned their farms, meaning abandoned the countryside, sino magpapakain sa city? All of you complain ang mahal-mahal sa city. Ang mahal ng pagkain nyo. Of course. You all stayed in the city. And then, konti lang na iwang farmer. Eh. And some people would say, pero walang opportunity sa city. Let me share with you a story of one of my staff sa, sa farm. Many years ago, ang minimum wage sa Manila, 250 per day. And ang sweldo ko sa farmer ko, sa tao ko, 120 pesos per day. Pero yung 120 pesos niya, Libre pagkain, libre bahay, libre pagkapunta ng farm. So walang gasos. All I want them to do is keep the 120. So he left kasi 250 or 280 ata ang Manila. He left. Sabi niya, makikipagsapalaran ho ako. Six months umuwi siya. Pag uwi niya, sabi niya, yung 280 ko, magre-rent pa ako, kakain pa ako, mamamasahi pa ako, walang naiwan sa akin. Dito sa farm ninyo, yung 120 ko, akin lahat. ba? Diba? In my farm training, I often talk I often talk to many of the children in, in Bukidnon. Ito sabi ko sa kanila, ano ang ambisyon nyo? Pumunta sa city. Sabi ko, pagdating sa city, ano, anong tawag sa inyo? Alila, domestic helper. Anong tawag sa inyo sa bundok? Land owner. Kaso lang you complain, ang hirap ng trabaho ng farm. I have to work 8 to 10 hours in a farm, mainit. Pero sabi ko sa kanila, pag alila ka sa Manila, how long do you work? 24-7? Di ba mahirap din yun? Don't, you're free. You can decide your life. So namimili tayo eh. So I really believe we need to consider what God has given us. I will close soon, but let me ask you this. Are you familiar with this promise? Sabi niya, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for calamity. To give you a future and a hope. Di ba all of you have been claiming this promise? However, as you claim this promise, ang tanong din ninyo, saan ko ba makikita yung plano ni God na yan? Where do I find it? So binenta natin yung lupa natin, nagbakasakali tayo sa ibang lugar, o hindi, let me also correct. Because I'm not asking all of you to leave the city. 
I am asking you, consider what God has given you. Some of you, may negosyo magulang ninyo. Napalaki nila. Pero sabi nyo, ayoko sa negosyo na yan. Hindi ako interesado dyan. Pero may negosyo na. Pero ayaw mo. So you, you went and looked for something else. Now, so all of you are familiar with this verse. And all of you are claiming this. Ang tanong lang, where do we find this plan? Where, how, so do we, do, we, do we go around looking for this? This is explained in Jeremiah 29, 4-7. Okay, remember this verse. Ah, all of you claim that. Let me read. Let me explain to you the context of how this was taught. Jer I will read Jeremiah twenty nine four to seven. Okay, listen to this. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exile whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon, build houses and live in them. Plant gardens and eat their produce. Take wives and become the fathers of sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and give them to your daughters, uh, and give your daughters to husband, that they may bear sons and daughter and multiply there and do not decrease. Seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile. And pray to the Lord on its behalf, for in its welfare you will have welfare. So God told the Jews, I have a plan for your future. It is good. Where were they? They were exiled in Babylon. They were in Babylon. What did God tell them? Did God tell them, go to go and leave Babylon? Did but God told them, stay. Stay where I have placed you today. And then sabi pa niya, build houses, build families, plant your garden and eat your produce. Pero I need you to understand. Look at this. Sabi niya, seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile. Kanina, I explained to you that God will entrust all of us with possessions and with talents according to our abilities. Pero, that possession is based on a location of His choosing, not yours. God has decided where you should stay. And so, therefore, God's good plan for you is where you are today. Look at verse 7. Sabi niya, Seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you. For in its welfare, you will have welfare. Before I close so that we can have an open discussion, do you still have a job? If you have, protect your company. Mahirap ko maghanap ng trabaho ngayon. Most of you, I am studying employee condition today because I'm, I'm, I'm creating a seminar called Employees' Journey to Fruitfulness because I'd like to show employees that you can prosper and become rich as be, well being employees. Meron akong na-discover. Sabi doon, all employees hate their jobs and their bosses. Majority hate their job and their bosses, but they love the company they work for. For, so so it's, it, is inherent, it, it is natural for us to hate our jobs and hate our bosses. But do not leave. Because people are waiting for you to leave so that they can have your jobs. Maraming walang trabaho today. Have you lost your job? If you have lost your job, maybe God is telling you, go back. Go back to what I have given you. Because I have blessed you already. I have given you what you need. Now, sabi mo, di sayang naman itong pinag-aralan ko, di ba? Sayang, naging OFW ko. OFW ko, may tutunod, babalik lang ako sa dati. Hindi. Because whatever you learn from your previous job, you can now use that. Di ba? God will entrust uh, possession and talents and abilities. So now you can go back to where you are. And maybe He's asking you, fill back the earth and take care of what I gave you. Are you an OFW? 
pag uwi mo, hindi mo alam anong gagawin dito. Ang suggestion ko, ask yourself, ano ang natutunan ko as an overseas worker, as an overseas Filipino? Can I now bring it back to my hometown, to my country, and use it to do business? So in fact, today, there's a lot of options. It is possible that God did not take your job. It is more probable that He is asking you to pursue a better opportunity. I want you to be encouraged. When God closes something, it is because He's forcing you to a better life. When I left Manila in 1998, people told me I was stupid. I was, go, I was giving my family a, a, a terrible future. And today, you know my story. Diba God gave me a container van to start with, a barren land to, 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 to farm. And now it's a good, it's a good farm. It, and now we even tell you our story. God took an executive position sa HP to give me a better life in Bukidnon. You see, God loves you. And He always wants you to have the best. Allow me to end lang. I, I would like you to know that I created a, a, a four blog series on what now. Okay? Uh, si Lloyd will slowly release that. So I'm actually done. I'm actually done and I'd like to thank you for listening. I will now open the floor for questions and sharing. And so I'll, 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 bring, I'll give back the floor to Lloyd. Okay? So yun lang ho. All right. Maybe All right. we can unmute. Uh, you ask kung mayroong tanong. Um, for those who have questions, um, reactions, or feedback, um, feedback. You just give a, give me a thumbs up so that they can unmute. Hello. Hello. I have a question. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I'm Joe Aguilar, and uh, I'd like to thank you for holding this uh, online session because. Um, and I'd like to thank also uh, Mr. Uh, Dodo and Mr. Lloyd. Because, uh, like, for instance, in my case, uh, I was an executive also for many years. And now I have my own company. But for some reason last year, somebody was selling a farmland. And I have been praying to the Lord um, for a farm. So the long and short of the story is I bought the farm because I wanted to be a good steward of the blessing of the Lord for my children. And I found okay. out later that the farm has 2,500 Dalandan trees. And I'm like, okay. what am I supposed to do with the Dalandan trees that now I have a farm? But I have no background on farming. So I'm so inspired with your story. Because I'm now inspired to cultivate the land. Okay. You know, so that it can help also the neighbors there for their vegetables or whatever food that can be grown there. And, you know, um, it's not really for profit, but I was thinking for the next generation, baka wala nang maakyatan na puno ang mga bata, you know, and also okay. to payamanin ang farm kasi wala na nga po nagpa-farming. So I just want to say that this is very inspiring but I'd like to know po, is there like a continuing session like this so that yung knowledge okay. din namin ay eh, matuloy-tuloy naman? Okay. Okay. Uh, Ma'am Jo, uh, yes po. Okay. That the reason why we're trying this, uh, I, I, I have a foundation where I teach most of my principal. In fact, I have a training called Farm for Profit to help farmers, would-be farmers like you. Okay? So we are trying if we can do soon because you cannot travel anymore. Okay? So we will try that. However, I will try to maintain you ganitong free discussion in fact, um, I'm scheduling, I'm uh, nag-usap kami ni Dr. Alvin Ang, who's an economist, so that he can share his thought naman. We will try to do this, but we also have seminars for the foundation. Pero ma'am Jo, those are paid, okay? Pero we'd like yes, to bring, that's okay. bring, bring them to online. 
However, meron lang sana akong gustong sabihin sa inyo, Ma'am Jo, because some of you may actually be going to farming. I don't know, Ma'am Jo, can I ask? Sabi nyo, you're an executive of a company. Yes, can, I, can I ask what you used to do before? Well, I was the Senior Vice President for Marketing of St. Luke's Medical Center, Global City, and Kansas City. Medical. So you're in the pharmaceutical industry? Po. Medical. Uh, medical. I was with St. Luke's Medical Center. Oh, okay. Okay, sorry. For anyway. seven years po. So uh, head of you're not, are you a doctor? I'm a pharmacist. Ah, you're a pharmacist. Okay, ma'am. Yes. Oh, ma'am jo. Okay. First, a number of things. Let me just react to a number of things. One, a farm cannot survive pag non-profit. Okay? Oh, okay. Okay? okay. Because a farm is like a well. Ano ibig sabihin? If you're not careful, ubusin niya pera mo. Okay? So, okay. kaya, yung first four years ko, ubus parati pera ko. Okay? Okay. <laughs> okay? It cannot, it cannot be run. Sabi ko, I will, it is just to help other people. Ubusin mm-hmm. ang pera mo. And ang problema ko, because you're an executive, sanay tayo sa invest-invest infrastructure. Mm-hmm. And mamaya, invest tayo ang tagal bumalik ng pera. Mm-hmm. Okay? So ako, I lo- I know, I've learned today, I don't invest big, I invest small, and then I scale up. Oh, that's a good thing. Okay? Ang farming ho, you cannot put infrastructure. Like for example, share with you, share with you a story. I have this friend. Farming daw siya. Executive din. So sabi ko, mm-hmm. ano ano mong binili? Land cruiser. Bakit land cruiser? Kasi farming mm-hmm. eh. Dapat may pasasakyan ako sa farm. Can you mm-hmm. imagine na yung, yung pera niya sa land cruiser hindi na umikot yun? Yes, yes. Okay? So Inip be careful. Po yung tubig. Oh, yung big, water. So o yung mga ganon. So be careful. Uh-huh. But on the other hand, the other thing that you need to invest is your ability. Yes, the okay? skills. Okay, yeah. The skill. Some people, when they go into farming, sabi, ah, madali yan. Let's hire consultants. I am against that. Okay? Yes, yes. I am against that. I'd rather that you grow your skills slowly than hire a consultant. Yes. Total, marami ka namang oras. Anyway, I, I have more things to, to, to share. Pero to those that are thinking of farming, meron ako sinasabi, Ma'am Jo, pag wala kang lupa, wag kang bibili. Okay? Mm. <laughs> Sorry. Mm. Kasi... Ma, kasi matagal pakitain ng farm. And I, I, and I saw, and, and, and I see a friend dito, si Donna Lecaros. Okay, they're farming in, in, in Mindoro. Matagal pakitain ng farm. However, pag kumikita na ang farm, which takes many years, mm-hmm. ang farm bigay ng bigay ng pera sa iyo pag nagawa mo siya ng tama. Okay, yes. so maybe you can join in our future training so that we yes. can... Yes. Okay. Yes, thank you po. Thank you. Thank you po. Okay, Sir Dong, meron din pong tanong. Do you have any um, insights or advice for those who are uh, in freelancing? Okay, first of all, I need to understand anong klaseng freelancing yan. Okay, so yung nagtanong, you'd like to expound on that? Ah, define services and photography. Okay. Ma'am Jen. Okay. Maraming negosyo ang nawawala ngayon. Let me just tell you when the, when COVID came, when COVID came, nawalan kami ng negosyo. In our farming or our vegetable, we used to sell to traders and to restaurants. When that came, nawala yan at zero yan. However, I always believe there are opportunities in calamities. So, ang na-develop namin is we deliver to homes. In fact, today, we are very busy in developing this new opportunity. Kaso lang, ibig sabihin, ibang market na. Ibang market. So, if you're into design, I still believe there are opportunities. However, minsan, however, minsan, uh, we're so used to our market that we do not see the other market. So you now need to use what you have to develop other things. To, siguro lang to, to just add to that. In 2010, we lost McDonald's. 
In 2002 to 2010, we used to supply McDonald's Philippines sa Manila their lettuce requirement. And 2010, nawala yan. All of a sudden, hindi yan siya sinabihan kami, all of a sudden, nawala yan. And so I wanted to close our vegetable business. However, sabi ko sayang naman yung natutunan namin. There must be something that I can use and that I can do. So that day when we were selling to McDonald's, we were just selling uh, iceberg lettuce. So we started to venture to, to, to planting all other vegetables. You know, it took time. It took us a year to, to become good. However, pero total na wala na naman yung market ko. Wala na, wala, wala na ako magagawa dyan eh. So, ginamit ko yung naipon namin to develop another industry. And that's the reason why napunta kami sa klase-klase. So, and then, and then ang tanong, where did I sell? I just sell to my neighbors. I sold to Cagayan. And today, that's what we're doing. No? I started to shrink our business to Cagayan and to Bukidnon. Mas maliit yung kita. Pero cash. When I was selling to McDonald's, mas, ma mas malaki yung benta. Pero utang. And so, ako okay na ako na mas maliit pero mabilis umikot. So, you can, you, God did not give you that those skills just to throw away. Hanapin mo lang kung ano ngayon ang bagong application on. And, and I need you to review where you're good at kasi magagamit yan sa ibang lugar. Okay? So I hope, I, Ma'am Jen, I hope that helps you. Um, may tanong dito from Marie. Many are enticed to farming at this time of COVID, even in the cities. Is urban farming real farming? Is it a future that we can look into? Well, urban farming, because of your limited land, is just that. Urban is to provide for you. It cannot be a business that will, that will give you a lot of profit. Because if you want to go into farming and profit from it, you need space, you need land. Ako, I'd like to encourage you, kung gusto mo mag-farming, two, two, two to five hectares is good. Pero kung nai, limited ang space, that just means, papakainin mo sarili mo. Now, yung sabi, sabi dito, sabi ni Marie na people are enticed in farming. Farming will be a good business. It is a good option. And in fact, sabi ko kanina kay Ma'am Jo, kung wala kang lupa, wag kang bibili. Pero kung gusto mo talaga mag-farming, it is a good business for the future. Now, why do I say that? Kasi mawawala ang importation. Most of our food have been imported ngayon. And so ito ginawa ng COVID. Ganito ginawa ng COVID. COVID shows you that if you import their goods, you import their disease. So in fact, ako, I encourage you to just feed your neighbor. Go into farming. Do not think big. Uh, feed your neighbor. You can use our model. Ako, my, my market today has shrunk. It is now Bukidnon and Cagayan de Oro. And we've survived. Okay? So, so if you really want to profit in farming, you need space. Hindi lang pwedeng urban-urban. Okay? Now, I, kasi I don't know sa urban if you can get one hectare in the urban centers to be able to do that. So, yun lang, Lloyd. Um, meron pa pong tanong, Sir Dong. Um, for a 100 meter or 1,000 square meter slot, how much would be a good safe amount to put in as a startup? From Vera Karaang. Okay. Um, there's, no, there's no formula for what you'd like to do. Um, ako, I have uh, a big land and we did not put a lot of money. Pinaikot lang namin yan. Uh, if you go 1,000 square meter and put a hydroponic farm, that would be very, very costly. Pero hindi ko lang talaga alam kung kikita ang hydroponic business. So do not, uh, there's no formula kung ano lalagay nyo. Pero ako, I always want to tell you when you're going into farming, please do it slowly because uh, you need to develop uh, your abilities. Okay, so... Ability ang importante sa farming, hindi investment. Okay? Yung iba, kala ninyo, paglagyan nyo ang pera ng farming, kikita yan, hindi yung totoo yan. Nawawala ang pera kung wala kayong ability. Whatever God bless you, 
he also also he also put opportunities kasi lang minsan we want the opportunity we want si god he wants you to consider the opportunities offering so you have to change minsan like for example do i really want to go into farming no when i started to farm sa ikong hirap pala nito so i want this ako sana nilagay natin pera natin sa city however yun lang binigay ni god eh so i decided in my mind ito na lang kasi kasuhin ko okay so may mga may mga may mga binibigay si god sa harapan natin na minsan lang we force what we want and often we have to want what we have okay baka lang you'd like to consider that always want what god has given you diba why why do many children abandon the the business of their parents kasi ayaw nila eh sabihin i don't like that eh pero meron nang negosyo i always tell them meron ka nang sisimulan eh but i don't like that eh pero when you start to when you start something na wala magastos yan pero if you start something na meron na hindi ba the only thing you have to change is your heart So I don't know what God is presenting to you, Clinton. But salam ko wherever He places you, He would put opportunities where you where he, where you can bring Him glory. So consider mo lang yan. Look around you. Pero pa po. Pero um, um, clarification yes. lang po ako. Hi, Mom Shine. I'm Mom Shine. Yes. Dun sa tatlong uh, tatlong um, tips or uh, na binigay mo kanina earlier ano sa yung third one na na I just want if, to know if I heard it right. Sabi mo, if you have no farm lot, do not buy. So what is your message to those who are in, you know, you have plans of buying a farm lot para magiging retirement um, place nila. If you also mentioned that a farm lot cannot survive if it's a non-profit thing, parang ganon. So what can you say? Can you enlighten us yeah. on that? Thank you. Many people would say, "I'd like when I retire, I'd like a farm, and then make it my alternative business." Okay, and so nagretire sila, Mam Shine. Lagay sila ng lagay ng pera. Mama yah na ubus na. So ang plano nila is to make it into a business. Mama yah pag hindi ko mita, tawag nila jan sa farm nila. Habi ko lang yan. And I always tell them, "Ang mahal naman ng habi mo," because you have to first understand farming. It's a business. If you are not committed to it, meaning like for example, Mom Shine, retiree, de ba? Ayoko na marang mahirap na trabaho. I will hire a farmer to do that for me. Maguutos lang ako. Hindi ho pwede yon, Mom Shine. Farming is one of the most difficult business I have seen. Mas mahirap siya sa negosyo natin sa corporate. However, na when I say pag wala kang farm, wag kang bibili. Wag kang bibili if you will not commit yourself to it. To make it a profitable business, now what do I mean? Kanina no si Mab Jo as executive siya sa isang medical firm. Ngayon she 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 grew to her position because she was committed to that business. Ikaw Mam Shine, you grew to become BM of Sun Life because you committed to that business. Farming is the same; it needs commitment. Okay, do not expect. A business to do not expect a farm to profit only because may pera ka. Mas 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 malakas siya kumain ng pera. So if you kung sabi mo gusto ko farming parang relax hindi ho relax ang farming. Pag gusto mo siya pakitain. But if you're willing to commit to it, ina doma ito naman gusto ko sa farming mam shine. When you have put the right infrastructure, ang farming labas ng labas ng kita without a lot of effort. Parang today, Mam Shine. In the past, I go to the farm three times a week. Today, I go there once a week. However, I still go. I I still watch it. I monitor it because I have this mindset: people will not love my money like I will. So I need to watch it. I need to be committed to it to make it profit. You know, I'm in new negotiation. Now we deliver to the house to the homes. Today, you know, negotiation. Namin. Idea ko yon. My people will not think of that. Idea ko yon. Now they're implementing. They're implementing that. But that is that's my idea because I am the business person. So yun lang, Mam Shine. I hope I hope you I I I I enlightened you. It is difficult to farm, pero farming is very rewarding when you have put things in place. Okay. Okay po. Salamat. Salamat, Mam Shine.
tulong for answering. <laughs> Salamat. Would like to visit your farm down in Bukidnon. Meron daw po ba kayong farm tour packages? Okay. Ang suggestion natin, Lloyd, parate, di ba? At uh, total, magbabunta naman kayo sa farm eh. Ang, in, in, ang, ang, mas, ang, ang gusto ko, sana, you, you consider the business training of Similia. Na-train ka na in business, natura namin farming. Then lahat ng taong pumupunta ng, ng, ng training natin, Lloyd, we bring them to the farm for free. Pero I don't like to go to, I don't like to host people sa farm na, na walang ibang kwan because it's really tiring. Alam mo gaano kalayo yung farm, di ba? And I, I, I really don't like uh, doing tours for the farm. Uh, ang rason, one, uh, normally people bring disease. Uh, I'm not saying you intentionally bring disease, but we, as we move, nagkakasakit yung mga hayop. Uh, so, however, when they attend our training, we are obligated to show them the farm because of the principles that we teach. Now, may, may tanong dito, no, Lloyd, isa pa. How do we encourage young people to go back to farming? Simply lang. We need to show these people that farming profits. If people, if 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 the young, uh, if the if the young generation do not see the kumikita ang farming, hindi yan sila magpa farming. And so that's the reason why we do this training. I'd like to show people that you can generate profit in farming. Um, pwede pong magbigay rin ng reaction, Sir Dodong, about uh, what you uh, said. Uh, yes, uh, you said that. Uh, Farming is a commitment, and I agree with that 1,000% if there's such. Uh, but I'd like also to uh, add that um, uh, aside from the profitability of farming, should be the purpose, the bigger purpose. Because mahirap na ang farming. There's a lot. There are a lot of uh, challenges in farming. There are a lot of uncontrollables in farming, like the weather, the rains, the etc. Right? Uh, pero if you are propelled by the purpose, uh, God's purpose for you to be in farming, then uh, it helps you persevere and. Uh, Re, re, uh, realize the profits maybe not immediately but in the long run. Tama po ba? Ako ma'am, the reason why I said that you should not go to farming if, we, if wala kang profit. I am not saying that pro profit is my, if, if my goal. Kaya ako lang sinasabi na kailangan siya kumita. In fact, I'm not talking about profit. I need it to earn so that I can put more money back. So, ginagawa ko sa farming namin. So, ang sinasabi ko lang, hindi ko sinasabi profit so that I can take it. A, a farm needs to profit so that it can be self-sustaining. Ibig sabihin, kami ho, nagpalaki kami ng farm without borrowing money, inikot namin yung pera namin. Minsan lang nangyayari, sabihin natin, farming, we should be a blessing to many people. Pag hindi kumita yan, hindi na lalaki yan, mamamata yan. So, importante sa akin kumita ang bawat activity so that I can flow it back. And I agree, farming, uh, mayroong purpose ang farming. Pero farming is a business. Lahat ng negosyo, pag hindi kumikita, mamamatay. So I just I, 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 I am just basically saying, don't go into farming just because gusto mo mag-farming. Go into farming to make it profitable. At the end, Ma'am Marie, ito suggestion ko. Pag kumikita na siya, go be a blessing. Pero mahirap maging blessing sa ibang tao pag wala tayong ipapamigay. Yes, so I, exactly. So I desire to be profitable so that I can be a blessing to other people. Yes. Tama po yan. Yes, I agree. Okay. I agree. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mama Lee. Meron dalawa rito. Um, yung isa is yung may one hectare land. Ano daw po yung pinakamagandang gawin dun sa business? And then meron pang isa after that. Mas may higin ng galing sa inyo, Sir Dong. Uh, for, forgive me for this, ha? but when people ask me, may lupa ako. Ano maganda itanim? I get very frustrated with that question because para rin yung tanong, magninegosyo ko, ano magandang pasukin? And you see, farming is not a, a business. Is, I always say farming is not about your crop. Business is not about your product. Farming is about the farmer. Business is about the entrepreneur. So ang nagpapag-succeed talaga yung tao. So it is important for me, say one hectare, 
So, one hectare, ang dapat tanong, unang-una, ano bang dapat ko matutunan para maging totoong farmer? And then, if I have one hectare, I look around and ask, ano bang kailangan kainin ng kapitbahay ko? Ano ba ang pwede kong ibibenta sa inyo? Some people would some people have done this sa Tagaytay. Meron ako one hectare. Uy, maganda yung lettuce. So naglettuce siya. Lahat ng tao naglettuce. Mamaya ngayon ang, ang farms sa ta Tagaytay nagsasarahan. Everybody went into lettuce only because maganda daw lettuce. So mamaya you flooded the market. And then ang ginawa nila, they hired consultant. Hindi sila nag-aral. Sabi ko kay Mom Jo kanina, I don't like consultants. Bakit? Kasi pag umalis siya, nawala ang alam ko eh. So I need to understand. So if you have one hectare, ask yourself, ano ba ang talagang ko matutunan to, be, uh, to become a farmer? And the, for, the first thing you need to do is to feed your neighbors. Ang pinakamadaling farming, ang tanong, ano kakainin ng kapitbahay ko? Okay? Huwag ka magtanong, ano kakainin ng Manila? Ano kakainin ng kapitbahay ko? That's the best way to start. And then, and then later, you evolve, you scale up. Okay? Uh, I was not always a lettuce farmer. I was a tomato farmer. And then I became an iceberg farmer. Mamaya, nawala yung iceberg. I, 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 I learned other things. So, so the abilities must, the abilities must adapt. And you must also adapt to your environment. So, sorry ha, if I said, I get irritated with that question kasi hindi yun ang tamang tanong. Tamang tanong, may one hectare ako. Anong dapat ko matutunan? And then, ano ang pwede kong gawin para may mabenta ako sa kapitbahay ko? Ang isa pa, last, last na itong nakita ko. Sabi niya, they were about to open a coffee shop last March 20, but they decided to postpone it for the meantime because of the pandemic. Any advice daw po on what they should do on opening it from Paolo Bautista? Ako, it's not, ako, it's not about the opening eh. Nawala yung market mo, di ba? Nawala yung market mo kasi may pandemic. So what do you do now? Do you just wait? Ako, i- i- during times of calamity, I will develop abilities to prepare for the opportunities. If you have listened to my calamity series, sabi ko, this too shall pass and everything goes on a cycle. Cycle of boom and bust. So we are now in a bust uh, period. Anong gagawin ko? I will prepare my abilities to prepare for the opportunity for the boom period. Ano ibig sabihin yan? Maybe in your coffee shop, alam mo lang, cheesecake. So ngayon, I will study chocolate cake. I will study this. Papamigay ko yan. Papakiain ko sa kapitbahay ko. I will test them. Today, Lloyd, diba tayo sa farm, we tested, we tried bosaka and then lamb curry. Okay? So during times of calamity, we're studying products. Pinasubok natin, pinakain natin. Because I'm waiting for the opportunity. So, so the time of calamity is not a time of ano mo, feeling sorry for ourselves. The time of calamity is a time to develop new abilities, to prepare for those opportunities. Sir Dodo, pwede akong magtanong? Okay, Ronald. Nice to see you. <laughs> Good evening po. Good evening. Yeah. Sir Dodo, yeah. Uh, actually, my wife, John, kilala mo naman, no? Uh, we're okay. planning to buy a land talaga no, for retirement. Uh, ang, ang product talaga na gusto namin is uh, yung coffee bean or co- cacao. So my question is, where is the ex- I mean, proper location or proper land for cacao and coffee bean? Kasi, you know, we are in the fix then, di ba? Nestle, one of our customers. Then. And I believe, marami requirements daw. <laughs> okay. I like cacao. Okay? I don't like coffee. Kasi ang daming sakit ng kape. Okay, ang cacao pwede mong balutin para hindi ka tamaan ng borer. Okay. However, cacao is in elevation na mababa, lower than 500 meters above sea level. Ayaw niya ng ulan. However, the best pa rin para ti Ronald, go where the processing plant is. Huwag kang magtatanim ng cacao tapos walang processing plant, ibabiyahin mo pa 'yon. Okay? So pero ang tanong diyan, ano ngayon dapat mauna, produkto o lupa? Pag nakabili ka naman ng lupa na gusto mo, huwag ka na mag-isip ng kakao. Tanong mo parate, ano kailangan ng kapitbahay ko? Di ba ganun lang yan? Like for example, nakabili ka, gusto mo sa Antipolo. Sino papakainin mo? Hindi Manila. Antipolo. Ang dami-daming tao sa Antipolo. So kakao, kakain ba ng maraming kakao Antipolo? Hindi. So ngayon, 
Ngayon, kailangan ka ngayon matuto ng ibang skill. Baka gulay, baka iba pa. So farming, farming is not about the product. Okay? It's about you and your environment. Okay, maraming opportunity. Para rin niyang negosyo. Ang negosyo, huwag mong sabihin gusto ko ikaw. Ikaw, you're in heavy industries, uh, heavy equipment. Huwag kang magsabi, para maganda computer ah. Benta nga akong computer. Eh, wala kang alam doon. Di ba? So, huwag kang magcomputer. <laughs> so, always ask yourself, anong abilidad ko, anong meron ako, and doon ka magpaplano. Okay, ang luting ko, farming is not about the product. Okay? It is about you as a person. Oh, kasi we're thinking na doon sa aming ano din eh, retirement eh. <laughs> okay yan. 10 years, no? Ang suggestion, anyway, thank you. Ang suggestion ko, Ronald, 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 huwag ka mag-retire. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Uh, pero okay. I, thank you, ah. May napasa rin kasi ako, di ba? May narinig ako sabi na in every crisis, no, uh, there's always uh, unprecedented opportunities. So right now, no, uh, since we are, nabanggit nga, we are in heavy equipment. So, alam naman natin na, yun yan, may, mayroong nasabi, we have, uh, parang, magkakaroon tayo ng recession, no? In the next coming months or coming quarters. So, as 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 equipment supplier, so most of our, actually, ang, ang backbone ng aming business is after sales, eh, parts and service. Okay? So, ngayon, nagkakreate na kami, ano yung alternative no since ang customer hindi to capital expenditure kasi equipment namin so hindi sila mag-invest as of now lalo na no yung ating crisis no so ano yung mga opportunities ngayon na aside from parts and service na pwede namin i-create within the group i mean within the product Hindi ko alam yun. Kailan makakapagsabi nun. So, to read it with you. Okay. That is not my industry. But ang sinasabi ko, in my industry, I will always look for that opportunity. And often, that opportunity is outside the industry that you are playing in. Uh, again, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, Doon po sa nagtatanong na yung mga future na events po ninyo, Sir Dong. So again, this is actually our test stage. And then we suggest po na to follow us on Facebook, um, YouTube, and also sa Keepers na channel. Okay. Uh, ipopost po yeah. namin yung mga ano, events. Okay. Anyway, I'd like to thank everybody for, for joining us. And thank you, Ma'am Winda and, uh, and Philip. Maraming salamat for, for just hosting us. May God continue to bless you. Sana natulungan namin kayo. If, if you have... If you have any question, uh, you can send me uh, uh, a note sa Messenger, uh, sa Viber, or, uh, or sa... Okay, so anyway, maraming salamat sa inyong lahat.